It's my pleasure to welcome to the podium today our commencement speaker, Governor George Nye, a 1950 graduate of East Central University, then called East Central State College, served as the 17th and 22nd Governor of Oklahoma. In 1950, Nye began a 32-year career in public office. He was the youngest member of the House of Representatives when he was elected and taught at McAllister High School, taking a leave of absence in alternate years when the legislature met. At the age of 31 in 1958, Governor Nye was elected Lieutenant Governor, the youngest in state history and the youngest in the nation at that time. He lost his bid for governor in 62, but briefly served as governor of Oklahoma for nine days in 1963 after the death of U.S. Senator Robert Kerr. The sitting governor, Howard Edmondson, resigned in order to be appointed by Nye to fill Kerr's seat. In 1966, Governor Nye was elected lieutenant governor and served in that capacity until being elected governor in 1978 and ultimately being re-elected in 1982. Some of his achievements include being the first Oklahoma governor to be re-elected and the first to win all 77 counties. He appointed the first two women, Yvonne Cogger and Alma Wilson, to serve as justices of the Oklahoma Supreme Court. He is also credited with increasing the numbers of minorities serving on state boards, commissions, and in the management of state agencies. In addition, he introduced legislation designating Oklahoma as the state song. During his career in public service, he chaired the National Conference of Lieutenant Governors, co-chaired the Interstate Oil Compact Commission, served on the Executive Committee of the Southern States Energy Board, chaired the Southern Growth Policies Board, and presided over the Council of State Governments. He was also a recipient of the Jim Thorpe Lifetime Achievement Award. He was honored in 1977 for being ECU's Distinguished Alumnus. Nye later served as President of the University of Central Oklahoma in Edmond. Governor Nye served the U.S. Navy from 1945 through 1946. He's a graduate of McAllister, McAllister High School and Eastern Oklahoma College in Wilburton before he came to ECU and graduated from here in 1950. He and his wife Donna had the Donna Nye Foundation, a nonprofit organization serving Oklahomans with de developmental disabilities. Please welcome to the podium the champion of civil liberties, the prince of public service, the honorable George Nye. Thank you, and the honor is that I invited back to my alma mater and to be here with you and to have this celebration. And a while ago, we had a moment of silence. This ceremony also needs a, a moment of cheer. So at the count of everybody in this place, at the count of three, turn and say, go Broncos to the person sitting behind you. One, two, three. the exciting thing about this is that at my age, as she told you, as a graduate here in 1950, I know a lot of music you all don't know, and you all know a lot of music that I don't understand. <laughs> but one of the songs that, that I grew up with was Memories, 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 you know, now the sea of memory, I'm drifting back, but Memories. Can you imagine me coming down here today with Jerry Johnson, who he and his wife Judy brought me down here, and he's a graduate here, and, and memories, all, all the way from Oklahoma City, got memories. Oh, I've been there, I've been there, we turned here, yeah, we did it, memories. And what a great thing memories are. And I come in here today, Madam President, and I, I look up there, and it says right there, Right there now, seriously, I want you to turn. Everybody turn and look up at the top and the left. 
NAIA men's basketball national runner-up 1950. I was here. <laughs> and the reason that brings such a great memory, she gave you all the things that, that the Wikipedia and Wi-Fi and the internet have about me, but I want to point out that I, it didn't say I was here. Claudia Overton was here with me from McAllister, his son's now basketball coach at Oklahoma Christian or Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City and, and, and memories. I started looking and it was here. All that stuff she said about me is here when I first realized I was a leader. I was a board leader. Here. During that tournament, I became aware of my ability to lead. We were in Kansas City. I was down here. I was a cheerleader at East Central. And I was over in the drugstore, which ain't there no more, playing bridge. And we had just done wonders. And they were came under, I was sitting there and I saw the best bridge hand I'd ever seen in my life. I was gonna make a grand slam. And they came running in and said, it's a walkout, it's a walkout. We're trying to get a day off because we're doing so good in the, in the, in the tournament. And then they came in and said, the president is calling a meeting over in the auditorium and they're going to discuss about giving us a day off to celebrate. And I was playing bridge and I said, oh, no, wait a minute. Don't mess up. Everybody leave your cards. Leave your cards just like they are. Don't nobody touch them because we're coming back here. I had a cocktail and ooh. And so we go over there and the president said, you don't deserve a, a day off. You weren't there to cheer them on. The team, you know, you know. And the president stood body got up and said, well, you don't deserve. And they went around the auditorium and people said, up, yes, we do, no, we don't. Yes. And I'm just sitting there thinking about that hand. And finally somebody hollered, everybody else had spoken. They said, well, why does I think? Now, why did they pick me? Why does I think? And I said, well, I don't know about, I stood up in the auditorium, 1950. I stood up in the auditorium and I said, I don't know about you all, but I'm tired of all this. I'm going back, I'm going back to the bridge head. I'm tired of all this and I'm leaving. And the student body stood and said, we're with you now. <laughs> and they picked me up and carried me out on their shoulders. Hollered, we're with Nye, we're with Nye. And we paraded down Main Street to the movie house for the Grand Parade and got a day off. And from that day forward, I knew I was a born leader. <laughs> Memories. Yes, I graduated in 1950. And yes, I was taking a government class here. And strangely enough, five students in that government class here at East Central filed for public office that year. Five of us. My opponent said that was a requirement to pass the course. You had to file for office, which it wasn't true. Them dirty lying rat. But anyway, the five of us, three of us got elected, and the two that lost ran against each other, and a third person won. My first entrance, and I hitchhiked back and forth to McAllister, Pittsburgh County, to campaign. And I ran into a McClendon out here. Just, I was going down the hall, and he stopped me right out there just now. He said, you remember speaking in plain view? Now, keep in mind, I'm trying to identify with this group. I wore my, my East Central pen just so I could look down and make sure I knew where I was. And I said, I remember speaking in plain view. I was a senior in college, 50, 19 and 50 here in a two-room schoolhouse, I was running for the legislature, and the only public speaking I got invited to outside of politics was to do the commencement speech at Plainview. And he just asked me right out there just a while ago. That was 1950. Plainview. Eight grades and two rooms. I hitchhiked to our paper. I hitchhiked, got off the main railroad 270, and then hitchhiked up a gravel road for two miles 
thank you. And they were standing at the well. They were spitting and wriggling. But I mean, I motivated those they great both of them. I, I motivated both of those kids at my first commencement speech. 1950, from right here, as a senior. And bring back such memories. And to think, I just want to kind of brag, every year since, 68 consecutive years, I've made it at least one commencement speech. I just, they, I want to, I'm going to speak to the young adults. I want to talk about, not today or yesterday, I want to talk about tomorrow. And that's my challenge, especially in East Central. Memories. And then I remember all those years I made those commencement speeches. I remember a night at Pittsburgh High School, no air conditioning, we were in the gym. No air conditioning, they raised the windows. I, they said, now George, be dramatic. Because you know, you're a legislator in a high school, to be dramatic and emphatic when you speak. And I was saying, yelling men and young, and a chewing bug flew into my mouth. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I'll never forget going to Bonita, Indian Territory, where my mother graduated, Bonita, IT. It was fun. Being an old Oklahoma history teacher, I love being at Bonita, IT. I'll never forget going to Ardmore. I went to Ardmore, and I, Ardmore High School, and my friend told me, well, we don't have to be there early. We can get there any time we want to. And so I said, no, I need to be there on time. As they were telling me today, don't be sure to be here on time. 15 minutes before 2 be at the north door. Well, didn't you? And I was going to, I kept telling this guy, I said, take me, that I'd gone to high school with McAllister. I said, take me to the municipal building. I gotta speak. Well, we got there, and they, the students were already in. The stage was already full, and I'm their speaker. And I run down the hall, and I come up and there's 20 people on the stage because they were honoring retiring teachers. And so I came in over here and the first guy stood up and shook my hand. Well, I'm a politician, so everyone stood up and I, I was shaking and I got to the podium. I not found, found an empty seat. So I turned, I said, what's on the other side of the podium? I went to the other side, Madam President, shook hands, and, and shook hands, and there was no empty seat there. So I just turned at the end of the stage and said, Congratulations, and walked off stage. <laughs> he called me the next day and said, everybody's talking about how drunk I was. At the... <laughs> and then you've watched me today. I, I held a hand and I stood for the pledge. But I have a leg brace on, and so I have a balance problem. But that reminds me, and they said, there's water up there. And that reminds me of the young preacher and the old preacher. And the young preacher says, oh, I'm worried about this. And said, ah, oh, don't worry about it. So I just... I said, I, I, let's go ahead and preach that you'll see a bottle of water up there. And uh, if, you, if you're having trouble, you need to clear your throat or you need anything, just, just, you know, just, I'll do it. Just, I'll take a swallow and get your thought. And he said, oh, oh, okay. So that's what I do, the old timers. That's what I do. So he got up there and he said, men and women, we're here today because we're here, we're, 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 we're here to talk about the future in our life and the world and talking about the, and, oh, yeah, yeah. And he just kept going and killed the whole thing. Just, and he said, now, i got to go back and tell you, he said, now, they'll think it's water, but it's really gin. It's a bottle of gin. And it will soothe you. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, we're going to see you. He got carried away, and then when it was over, the young preacher went to the old preacher and said, How do He said, Well, son, you did pretty good. You were strong. You were dramatic. You got some of your figures wrong. David slew the giant. He just didn't haul off and knock the hell out of him. <laughs> and so memories. And I remember the most famous, popular, the standing ovation I got when I made the commencement speech in Eden outdoor football stadium and I was sitting here on the stage and there was a, one of like the storms we've been having it was bad over Eden and I leaned over to the superintendent and I said 
Are you going to give the diplomas first or am I speaking first? I said, well, you're going to speak first, then the kids. I said, I think you better shift it. We better get these kids across here and get their diploma, and then if there's any time left, I'll speak. So I said, well, that's very nice. And so we did it. And he got up and he said, our speaker today is George. Now, and boy, a strike of lightning came and struck just over the football field. Everybody screamed, and I stood up and just pound burst, and it came down. And I said, congratulations. And I got a standing ovation as everybody was <laughs> running to it. That's all I said. Memories. Memories. I'll never forget memories. And then I'll tell you one of the memories I had as a senior here in 1950 was whether or not I was going to graduate, whether or not I was going to get my diploma. Because I had missed a semester. I went two years at Easter, and then I went. I thought I was going to OU law school, but I hated, excuse me, any lawyer, I hated law school and I lasted six weeks. And the dean said, just think, half of our students won't be here at the end of the semester. And I said, I'm going to save you some trouble. I'm leaving today. <laughs> and I left and dropped out of law school and ended up in East Central in January. And then the next year, 49, and then came here for the next year of 50. But I had 120 hours required minimum to graduate. I was running for the legislature. I was going to be, I was going to get my diploma. And I had it exactly, and I had a math test. And I didn't do, oh, it's, I, and I thought, if I fail this test, I can't graduate. And can you imagine running for office as a senior who failed to graduate because he flunked the math test? Fortunately, I passed it. But my memories were that I worried. And we all worry. I worry about here I am at an institution of higher education, and I'm a, I don't think they know what to call these things. Is this a commencement? I mean, I don't understand that. This is a commencement. Your parents, your friends, your grandmothers, daddies, cousins. This ain't the commencement. This ain't the beginning of your college. This is the ending. Why is it a commencement? Why ain't it the ending? You worry about that? It's because the critical part of your life is about to commence. When you get to decide, what am I going to do with what the faculty and the staff and my friends at Good Old East Central did for me? What about commencing? May I tell you that back when I was lieutenant governor, one of those terms, a Republican governor, Dewey Bartlett, asked a Democratic lieutenant governor, George Nye, to lead a delegation to go to the Carolinas to study whether or not Oklahoma wanted Votech. Can you imagine a Republican governor and a Democratic lieutenant governor? I'm heading his committee to see. And that's what brought Votech to Oklahoma. Went down and we hired the guy away that did such a great job there. Now career tech. But I was there at that Votech. And I went through, I came down this hallway right here to, to the men's area, and it kind of reminded me of it. We went through a bunch of hallways at this career tech, bro tech place in South Carolina, and this guy had pasted all over every wall, on the window, on the windows, on the, on the roof. There were pieces of paper with stuff scratched on it. I said, what is that? He said, that's the only way I can remember stuff. And as I'm walking through his, this stuff, one stuck out to me that I want to share with you. It simply said, do what you can with what you have where you are. And to this day, up 10 years later, that's what I tell a graduating class that's commencing. Do what you can with what you have where you are, don't worry about somebody else at some other place. They live there. If only I'd been born. If we were on the other side of the tracks, if we'd only been up north, if they don't. Do what you can, graduates, with what you have. That's where you are. 
And just think, from these graduating classes, yes, I'm honored to be a former governor. Over in your building over here is a governor's room. Ladies and gentlemen, in another building right up here is a governor's room. And here we are at East Central, and what I keep doing, I graduated from East Central. I don't have a chance. I didn't get to. They have a room for the governors. Five, five governors from this campus. Two governors, yes. <laughs> Governor Kirk. I was what? A governor from Arizona? A governor from New Jersey? And Governor Anna tell me, five people who bear the title of governor did it from here. Do what you can with what you have, where you are, you can do it from here. I close by telling you one other, one other memory I have of commencement. It was at Weatherford on the Southwestern Regional, another regional university campus, in folding chairs on a summer night, and I got up and I thought, oh, what am I going to say? Last thing they want to do is hear another commencement speech, but I'm here and I'm going to give it. I was trying to think, what can I say? And as I got up to speak at Weatherford on the campus of Southwestern University, a full, I call it a harvest moon. Of course, it was in May, but it was a harvest moon. A full moon came up over my shoulder from the east. It was right there. And I got up, and the audience is out here, and I said, don't look at me. Do not look at me. There is your commencement speech. That full moon is your commencement speech. Look closely at that full moon as you sit here and worry, can I do it from here, South Wicker? Can I do it from Oklahoma? That full moon, that very night that I was giving a commencement address on that campus, that full moon, there was a spaceship coming back from the moon under the direction of Colonel Tom Stafford from Weatherford. Oklahoma. You think I couldn't look out there and say, you can do it from here? You think I don't know there are five governor's pictures over there in that building and I can say to you, you think I can't say to you, you can't do it from here. You can do it from here. Memories, don't worry too much. There's going to be change in your life and it commences when they give you the diploma. So let me make one observation that I, I really am through. When you open it up and there ain't anything in there, and it says if you don't take the library fine, you still ain't in it. <laughs> Congratulations. Do what you can with what you have where you are.